Justin here today. We are checking out From Me To You by The Beatles. This is a really great song for intermediate guitar players that are just getting to grips with the bar chords because it's mostly open chords and there's a couple of opportunities where you can use extra bar chords or escape out of them if you're struggling with them, if your hand's getting sore. But it's good practice getting in and out of your bar chords. Notably, it's got a G minor in it, which there's no real, not really a way of playing that one as an open chord. So uh, let me take you through the chords first of all with a real super simple strum. We'll talk about the strumming later because there's a few different approaches to this one as usual. Um, so four down strums to the bar, we've got C chord, da, 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 dum, dum, A minor, da, da, C, and then to A minor, that's the intro out of the way, in the verses. If there's C chord, that you, A minor, if there's C chord, that I can G, just F on me, and I'll A minor along with C from G to C to A minor second verse in C and then to A minor like a C that's so so G just F on me and I'll A minor it along with C from G7 to C to C7 we got G minor that longs to see you and F you by my side I got D7 that longs to kiss you And G to G augmented Okay, that's the sections that we need, okay? So we've got the first one and verse two ever so slightly different at the end. And then the bridge, we've got the so a couple more unusual chords, the G minor and a G augmented, which is also a very nice chord. Not particularly difficult, so don't be scared of it. Um, so all of the first verse uh, and second verse are all the same up to the last two bar section, okay? So C for a bar, then A minor for a bar, C, and then G. You could also play G7 there, but I think G, to my ear, sounds better in this kind of acoustic strummy environment. Then F, notice again, you know, I'm very often going to be playing F chord like this. Now, it, it, for most beginners, you're not going to be playing like that. Even most intermediate guitar players are going to struggle to get the thumb over. I do it just out of habit, but you're almost certainly going to be wanting to do a proper bar chord F at that point. Um, then to A minor. Now, the, the last uh, two bars of the verses, verse 1, C, G, or G7. So you could go C, G7, C, A minor if you want, or just C, G, C, A minor. Okay, either one of those things would work. At the end of verse 2, C, G7, you could play G again there, G7 to me in this particular part works nicer, going C to C7. Okay, so just adding the little finger down on the third fret of the third string to go from C to C7. Now, we got the bridge, we're moving to bar chords, okay? So G minor, there's no way of playing a G minor open chord. Well, there kind of is, but it's really awkward and you know, kind of pointless. It's a lot easier to play the bar chord one. So uh, you're moving to the third fret, uh, thicker string root. Uh, so just the third and fourth fingers down, making sure that you've got that bar holding down the third string, because that's the most important note there to, to really trigger the, the G minor sound. Now, you could at that point move to a regular open C chord, but I would suggest if you were there on the G minor that you're going to move to the fifth string root A shape 
for the C chord, okay? A shape meaning this little chord shape is based off of the, the shape of A, okay? Like that, it would be an A chord, but we're using the bar, which referred to as an A shape, or a fifth string root, if you're not used to the cage system uh, names of these chords. So G minor to C, and then to F. Now the next chord is D or D7. You could play regular D, or you could play D7. You could play D7 up here as well, which is just like a C, a C7 that we used earlier, but up two frets. I quite like the sound of that one, particularly for Beatles songs. It's, it's got a particular thing that's uh, sounds of the era to my ears. And then we've got this G to G augmented. Now, the easiest way to play a G augmented is to go from a regular G chord, but just using third and fourth fingers. Again, if I'm if I've got a lot of C and Gs in a in a uh, song, I'm likely to use this this version. Uh, sometimes with my second finger down as well, but more often than not, I just use third finger on the third fret of the thickest string, mute the fifth string, because I don't like the sound of that low B. This kind of gets muddy to my ears, but so I mute that. Three open strings, and then little finger on the third fret of the thinner string. Now to get to G augmented, I just add first finger in the first fret of the fourth string. Okay, so there's G, G augmented. Okay, it's a really cool sound. Very Beatlesy. Going to C. You get that nice. movement there within the kind of the chords which I think makes it sound really cool. Um, if you're going full bar chord for the bridge which is a nice kind of thing to be doing is to be doing open chords for the verses and then bar chords for the bridges it just kind of you know differentiates the sections in a way that can be quite pleasing. So you'd use G minor C to F then to D7 you could use that you could use D7 like this as well the fifth string root A form if you wanted to. I think that this one sounds nicer. If you're going to do that, there's a really another really nice G augmented seven you can play. Go from a regular G bar chord, G major bar chord. Now, I can add the bass in on my with my thumb as well, but you wouldn't have to do that. You could just play the top part, which would be first finger on the third fret of the fourth string, third finger in the fourth fret of the third string, little finger in the fourth fret of the second string and second finger on the third fret of the thinner string. It's a, re it's a really, really nice uh, G7 sharp five, I guess, or G augmented seven, some people call it. It's just got, a, it's another one of those ones, it's nice, nice movement within the chord shape. So, um, probably better, actually, that. that's where it's going. this chord and this chord, same notes, just swapping around a little bit. But uh, for most people, that'll be the trickiest uh, part, will be just dealing with the G augmented and those new chords. I'd, you know, for any of you that are beyond the beginner stage, I definitely recommend having a go with these bar chords. You could play the whole thing as bar chords, though, note as well. So that's something that uh, we're going to talk about the rhythm in a second. But uh, you could do that you want, and if there's anything I can do. Just call on me and I'll send it along with love from me to you. Okay, that would be a really good exercise to be able to do that. And in some ways, I think that kind of works for the song more if you're going to be doing it a little bit more authentically with the strumming. So um, talk about beginner strumming pattern, first of all. The, the nicest one to, to start off with beginners would be Old Faithful. So down, down, up, up, down, 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 up up down one two and three and four if there's anything that you want if there's anything i can do just call on me and i'll send it along with love from me to you okay the, obviously where i have to change that is that last two bars of the verse because it's two strums per bar so we want to strum on beat three which is missing in old faithful so down 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 Sometimes it sounds like I'm going like one, two, and three, four, and one, two, and three, four, and. But that last little up is kind of it's accidental. It's happening, but it doesn't matter. With the strumming, remember that as long as you keep your hand moving, if you put in an extra strum here and there, it's going to be totally fine. So don't worry about that. 
So that strumming pattern would be a good starting point. Now, if you're going to do the bar chords version, you can start to pay a little bit more attention to what it actually sounds like on the record. And the record has a really strong accent on two and and four. So you get this. <laughs> But to get that level of accenting, you really you, you're holding the bar and you're just pressing the chord down. One, two and three, four. One, two and three, four. One, two and three. Four. So you're doing I call it pumping. So I'm just like the chord is in place, but I'm press. Sometimes I'll put a, a strum on one as well. So the strum on one will be slightly lighter, okay? And if you apply that strumming pattern all of the way through, if there's anything that you want, if there's anything I can do, just call on me and I'll send it along. Love from me to you. Now you can hear already, aside from that wrong chord just at the end, um, you can hear that doing it that way there's also other things creeping in like little variations on the build going. So doing that kind of thing at, at that level, if you're playing bar chords and you're able to do the, the strumming pattern with the accents, you can start to think a little bit about form and build and where you might develop it and where you might chill it down a little bit, where you might build it up, because that kind of dynamic thing, if you stayed the same with a real static strumming pattern for the whole song, it would get boring to the listener. So um, you do want to think about that if you're playing this in a kind of a, a you know acoustic guitar and strumming version. In a band, it's a different thing. Okay, so playing it in a band with different parts where you would really strictly do those rhythms, they'd be a lot tighter on electric guitar. Um, you'd you'd pay more attention to how of, of of your job in the band. Okay, because you're not the sole provider of the groove there. So if you're playing by yourself. You know, you could definitely be doing like open chords and a little bit simpler strumming there for the for the choruses or for the, sorry for the verses, and then for the bridge you move it to the all bar chords with a bit of a heavier accent. That kind of thing works nice. It's really up to you to explore uh, how that might work. Um, I think that's pretty much the whole tune. The only other thing is right at the very end of the tune is this slight variation where it's love from me to you. Okay, so he's using this A minor major seven from an A minor chord. It's a it's full swap. It's second finger goes to where first finger was, so it was first fret of the second string. First finger goes down first fret of the third string, and third finger is going down in the second fret of the fourth string. It's a really cool chord, often used in jazz. Like I was a boy, very strange, enchanted boy. And as he spoke of many things, fools and kings, that kind of sound. Beatles used it quite a bit as well. So I hope you have a lot of fun with this tune. There's definitely a lot of things to check out for an intermediate guitar player. You can keep it fairly simple, mostly do open chords and introduce a few bar chords. You can play at all bar chords. You can look at doing the accents on the two and and four. You can look at pumping the chords. Quite a few different things to check out. You know, really good uh, for intermediate guitar players to have songs that can kind of grow as they develop those kind of techniques, you know. Uh, do remember that all of the songs are all graded over on the website, so you can find songs that work really well for you. It's a lot easier to find all of the right songs as well you know just you might get inspired to check out some new material as well and you can save your songs over to the songbook on your dashboard and all of these fancy new features over there that you might want to check out on if you haven't already if you happen to be on youtube please subscribe to my channel because i really appreciate your support and i'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye